Hey guys, it's Drew Bradshaw here, and let's go ahead and look at setting together. So what is setting? In literature, the setting is the surroundings and time in which the events of a story take place. I'm sure all of us have studied setting when we were younger, but now that you have some background knowledge on setting, we can look at it a little deeper. So, setting differs between stories. So, in, in War and Peace, it's set in Russia during the Napoleonic Wars. So, here's a location, here's a time period, and here's Napoleon. In Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol, it's set in Victoria-era London. So, London is the location, Victoria-era is the time period, but also Christmas time specifically. We're all familiar with The Wizard of Oz, which is set in the fictional land of Oz. But there are also some other settings in there, like Kansas, or specifically a farm. So there are many different set, uh, settings there. And then when you're thinking of the time period, well, you'll learn more about that when you take Kansas history, about populism movement, and you'll figure out why that takes place in that time period. Setting can include information about an era or period, date and time of day, geographic location, weather and natural surroundings, immediate surroundings of a character, or social conditions. So how do authors set the scene? Well, they describe things that you might see or experience if you, the reader, were there. So think of your senses. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel, smell, or even taste? Authors may also describe what's happening in the world beyond the present moment in the story, where we are in time and what big events just brought us to that moment. So they might give you some background of this to help fill in some ideas of the setting. Let's take a look at together a passage from Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. As I'm reading this, try to figure out a little bit about the setting. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way, and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down what seemed to be a very deep well. Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly. She had plenty of time as she went down to look about her, and to wonder what was going, on, what was going to happen next. First, she tried to look down and make out what she was coming to, but it was too dark to see anything. Then, she looked at the sides of the well, and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves. Here and there, she saw maps and pictures hung upon the pegs. So we learn a little bit about the setting. There's a tunnel, and it seems like a well, but not just any well a very deep well. And then in this world, time appears to be a little slower. She had plenty plenty of time to look around her and wonder what was going to happen next. So we know it's a deep well. We know that time is going slowly. We know that it is very dark down there. And she can see things or notice things on cupboards and bookshelves that were all around her. The description of this setting builds slowly, adding one detail on another. We learn something more with each new sentence, and if one of the details were left out, the rest of the setting wouldn't make much sense. If we heard about the shelves and maps before we knew that Alice was falling through the well, they'd just be hanging in thin air. Setting answers three questions. One, where does the story take place? Two, when does the story take place? And three, what are the conditions like in this time and place? Settings help you, the reader, figure out where the characters are, what they're doing, and gives them a context or a relevance. Setting can be different from place to place or story to story, but the details bring it alive so that you understand what's going on.